everyone, Abby here, and welcome back to my channel for Tech Tuesday, or welcome if you're new. So today I'm doing a video that was requested by many of you. I'm comparing the Garmin Venue 2S to the new Garmin Forerunner 265S. But before I get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you can stay tuned to all my new videos dropping weekly and so you can help the channel grow. Today I'm gonna to be going over the most important similarities and differences I found between both of these smartwatches. If you are looking for something more in depth, you wanna see exactly how they work, you want to hear my full opinion on them, I've done full reviews on both of these smartwatches which you can find at the top right or in the description below when you're done watching this. So I have the Garmin Forerunner 265S here in the color light pink, white stone, black. And I have the Garmin Venue 2S here in the color white rose gold. And all right guys, in case you missed my last video, I'm currently doing a Lululemon bag giveaway. If you are interested in entering that, make sure to head to the video on the top right or in the description below to enter when you're done watching this. So I've gone ahead and listed on screen for you the major spec similarities I have found between both of these smartwatches, such as sleep tracking, step tracking, women's health, hydration monitoring, activity tracking, and much more. Now these are not all of the similarities, but these are definitely the most important, I think. Now I'm gonna get into the major differences between both of these smartwatches. And the first major difference is the price. So the Venue 2S, this is a smartwatch that was released in 2021. And right now, as of recording, it is on sale. So the current price as of recording is 389.99 Canadian and 299.99 American, so both $100 off. And the Forerunner 265 being a brand new smartwatch from Garmin has not gone on sale yet. And the current price as of recording is 599.99 Canadian and 449.99 American. And if you guys are looking to get one of these smartwatches, I have links in the description below. And I've recently come out with a video showing you guys a discount that I found to save money on my Garmin smartwatches. I have a full video on that, which you can find at the top right or in the description below when you're done watching this. A definite advantage about a smartwatch that has been out a bit longer is it does go on sale a lot more regularly. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and listed on screen the major spec differences I have found between both of these smartwatches. Some of those being battery life, design, operation, the activities and workouts available, and more. And now I'm gonna go more into depth on some of these differences. All right guys, so another difference between these smartwatches is the design. They're both touchscreen smartwatches. They both have an AMOLED color display. So in my opinion, the Forerunner here is a bit more sporty looking. We also do have full button operation or touchscreen only. And you can see with that classic Forerunner band holes throughout, as well as that black bezel going along here. And all right guys, if you find this video helpful so far, please go ahead and smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. We do have Garmin's new Elevate heart rate sensor at the bottom here, and we do have a 18 millimeter quick release watch band. Coming over to the venue here, we have a more kind of sleek design, in my opinion, less sporty looking. We have a band with some kind of checkered design on there. We can see a nice rose gold bezel, and up close on the bezel, there are these little lines on it. Coming over to the bottom, we do have Garmin's new heart rate sensor as well. And one thing to mention is that they are both slightly elevated heart rate sensors. And once again, on the venue, we also have a standard quick release watch band. Another thing about the design I wanted to point out is that the Forerunner here does have a slightly curved display. It does make it hard to put on screen protectors here. I do find that they fall off pretty easily, where this one, there's a screen protector on it. Um, I've had this one on in particular for about two months and it's been sitting well, no raising at all. The resolutions are the exact same, but they do have different watch face options as well. The Venue actually has a lot more watch face options than the Forerunner, so that's something that could be, you know, a deal breaker for you. And yes, both of them have options to be more kind of analog if you want that type of thing. But for me, I love the digital watch faces. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and tried them on and I've put them on the same wrist for you guys. So you can see exactly how they look like on me and how they compare in size. So here I have the Venue on Solo. And here's the Forerunner on me Solo as well. 
All right, guys, so when it comes to wearing both of these smartwatches, I find them both very comfortable to wear. I don't have any issues with any irritation between either of these smartwatches. And when it comes to the weight difference, it's very, very minute. And honestly, when I'm wearing them solo on either wrist, I don't feel a difference at all. They feel the exact same to me. And they are both very lightweight smartwatches. Honestly, the type of watch that you put them on and you forget about it after a few hours. And I've also gone ahead and listed on screen the wrist sizes that these watches can fit. Now looking at Garmin specs, they do say that they could fit the same wrist sizes, but I honestly think this could fit more wrist sizes because it has holes everywhere. So, I mean, <laughs> more options. And when it comes to fitting the larger wrist sizes, they fit the exact same because they have the same amount of holes here. You really do have small wrists. This one has a few extra holes at the top, so it can fit slightly smaller wrist sizes. For me, I do have a seven inch wrist and both of them fit me very well. So when it comes to battery life between both of these smartwatches, the Garmin Venue 2S has a coded battery life up to 10 days and the Forerunner 265S has a coded battery life up to 15 days. So with my actual usage, things like GPS, walks, cycling, daily alarms, timers, and more, I've gotten on average 12 days of battery life with the Forerunner here and seven to eight days of battery life with the Venue 2S. 12 days of battery life, obviously better than seven to eight, but honestly, both of them are fantastic in my opinion. With both of them, only really gonna need to charge your smartwatch once a week. And for me, that is fantastic. I'm someone who hates charging my smartwatches daily, but I think both of these are great options for people who don't want to charge a smartwatch every day. I think they could work well into most people's lifestyles. So both of them actually do have the ability to download music, store it on here. The Forerunner here downloads your music a lot faster. For example, when I went ahead and downloaded a playlist of 30 songs from Spotify, it took the Forerunner about 12 minutes to download those 30 songs, and it took the Venue 2S here about 35 minutes to download those same 30 songs. So definitely a faster kind of music download experience. So as I told you before, both of these are touchscreen smartwatches, but the Forerunner here has an option to do button only operation as well, which can be really advantageous for those of you who like your button operated smartwatches. Button operated smartwatches, they never accidentally activate on you. They are super helpful in situations where you're wearing gloves, for example. Let's say you're out on like a winter run, your fingers are cold, you're wearing your gloves, they're not actually working the screen properly, the buttons come into clutch then, and you can just press it and do what you need to do. Same thing when your hands are a bit wet. If you're using this in the pool and you're gonna be tracking your laps, very advantageous to have buttons here as well but many people prefer touchscreen operation because it's a lot faster and easier to use. And a lot of people like the experience of, you know, swiping stuff if you're coming from your phone. Now on the venue, as I said, this is a touchscreen operated smartwatch and very quick and easy to use. And we do have some buttons here for quick shortcuts and things. I prefer the operation on the Venue, to be honest. It's a lot faster to use the Forerunners. I know it's button operated, but it doesn't work the same way touchscreen as the Venue does. It's, it's more complicated and it takes a little bit longer to do certain things. If you're someone who's new to smartwatches, this is gonna be very easy for you to pick up where this is gonna take a bit more, has a bit of a longer learning curve in my opinion. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna be talking about the activity tracking. One thing I wanted to mention, if you are a big runner, then this one has a lot more running metrics, activities, stuff on it. For example, you would get your daily suggested runs, and you can see for today, this is my suggested run. The Forerunner here does have additional running profiles and running workouts you can track, like the ultra run, virtual run, but besides that, they have very similar activities. And when you're doing your winter sports or if you're doing your elliptical, your yoga, whatever, like they can track almost the exact same activities, guys. Another thing is if you're doing GPS runs outside GPS activities, the Forerunner here does have more GPS options and better GPS battery life compared to the venue. And this one does have sounds. You get your tones, like you just heard, where the venue does not have any sounds, it is vibration only. 
So when it comes to our health metrics, like our steps, calories burned, distance walked, floors climbed, all of that is basically identical between both of these smartwatches. As you can see on screen, my steps are just like a few steps apart. So not any major differences that I have seen in my experience. They might differ between one to 4% or so. The biggest difference I have seen between them is the heart rate data for my workouts. So I have noticed that the Forerunner is more sensitive to detecting quick changes in your heart rate. For example, if I do HIIT exercises or if I do cardio, I'm going for high to low intensity, it does a better job at detecting those heart rate changes faster than the venue does. However, overall, as you guys can see from this example work I have on screen, not a huge difference here, but that's something I did want to mention. And going around my day if I'm not working out, I see the exact same heart rate results if I'm resting or if I'm doing light walking or something. It's just really during that intense kind of workouts that I find the Forerunner is a bit more sensitive. Um, you can see it's a bit more pronounced and easier to read on the Forerunner. You're kind of more zoomed in on the graph here. So I think the updates on the Forerunner here, being a newer watch, has allowed it to have a bit faster heart rate performance there. But overall, I think both of them have great heart rate performance. And when it comes to our sleep tracking as well, I'm finding them to be very, very similar. They're not gonna be as accurate as a Fitbit, but they are pretty good in my opinion, especially if you're someone who just wants to see a general metric on how many hours it is sleep. They both do a good job at that, in my opinion. All right guys, so which smartwatch is best for you? Well, that depends on a couple of factors. One thing I would ask you guys to think about is, are you a runner or not? Because if you are someone who is a advanced runner, you want all those running metrics out there, you want the ability to track your trail runs, your road runs, your treadmill runs, your all your different types of runs out there, and you want all those running metrics, you want suggested workouts, everything to do with running. Uh, if you're also someone who wants a more sporty looking smartwatch and you want to, you know, the option to have a button operated smartwatch as well, and you want that extra battery life, then I think the Forerunner could be an excellent option for you. However, if you're someone who you're not a big runner at all, or you're someone who hates running, then you might not want to go with the Forerunner at all because you're going to have a lot of features on there that you're paying more for that you're not going to use. On the venue here, we have a bunch of fantastic exercise metrics. It can track basically almost everything that the Forerunner can when we are not talking about the whole running metrics there and we have more watch face options it goes on sale a lot more often so you have a better chance of grabbing it at a lower sale price and it's something that looks a bit more sleek so if you're someone who falls into that boat where you just want a smartwatch that's an all-arounder then I think the venue could be a great option for you now when it comes to me and which one I prefer I would go with the Garmin Venue 2S. Now a couple of things that make me pick this over this is the design one. I love the design here. Nice and sleek. It really goes with every outfit that I have. I'm a sucker for, you know, those gold accents as well, especially since it matches my ring. So I love that. And it really tracks everything I need it to. You know, I'm not someone who is a big runner, so I really don't need everything that the Forerunner offers. I also like the fact that the venue has a lot more watch faces than the Forerunner. I'm someone who loves to switch up my watch faces and the venue has a lot more. Now, that being said, I think both of these are fantastic smart watches. And if you were to pick up either, I don't think you'd be disappointed. Once again, both of these smart watches could really do almost the exact same basic things like tracking your activities, your sleep, your calories burned, to look at all your notifications from your phone and more but it just really depends on the activities you do and kind of the design you're looking for as well. And once again, if you are still a bit confused and you want more information about either of these, I have done full reviews on them, which you can find at the top right or in the description below. And if you guys are looking to pick up either of these smartwatches, I've gone ahead and left a link down in the description for you to use. And if there's anything I missed today that you wanna know, just go ahead and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching guys, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.